Welcome to Odd Texas Football. It's time for the recruiting breakdown. I'm Bobby Burton, joined by C.J. Vogel. This episode brought to you by Mark Saunders of Allstate. Uh, hey, C.J., uh, big week last week for the Longhorns. Finished up very, very strongly in recruiting. End up number three overall in the recruiting team rankings. Uh, 23 verbal commitments, 18 of which are midterm enrollees. They now have three uh, mid-year transfers from the transfer portal. Uh, we still have some portal work to be done. We're going to talk a little bit about everything today, uh, but he here's the here's the overall. We're not going to spend too much st time on stuff that's already happened, but we do want to say this. Uh, Texas number three overall. Uh, they are now focused on portal and high school recruiting to finish out the 2024 class. The 2024 class uh, has two more possibilities in it as of right now. That's Dominic McKinley, a five-star defensive lineman out of Lafayette, Louisiana and Alex Foster, a defensive lineman out of Greenville, Mississippi. Uh, McKinley currently committed uh, to Texas A&M. Foster currently committed to Baylor. They are both signing on February 7th. The next thing we want to say is portal recruiting. We believe Texas still going after a tight end, a wide receiver, and potentially a defensive lineman in the portal. None of those guys may already be in the portal yet for Texas, although uh, we do think that there's some possibilities here and there. All right, that talk, that's the recap, all right? That's the recap point. Uh, now we need to talk about the class of 2025. And I want to start, Texas currently has three commitments, but we're going to start on offense and go down the offensive group right now, CJ. Uh, KJ Lacey is, is causing a little bit of a stir right now. He is the quarterback out of Sarah Land High School in the Mobile area of Alabama that's committed to Texas, but has been taking unofficial visits to Auburn one of his teammates just committed to Auburn. Another of his teammates may be leaning to Auburn. Is the writing on the wall here, or do we know more about what's going on with K.J. Lacey and his commitment to Texas? Well, we certainly know how much Steve Sarkeesian and his staff want K.J. Lacey to take his commitment in June this far out from the 2025 signing day. says a lot about how they view him as a prospect and a priority. But with that, and with being an out-of-state kid, there's a lot of time for schools in his backyard to come poaching around. And obviously with the Auburn movement, we're starting to see that a little bit. Whether or not a move is imminent, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But we do know that there will be a tough pursuit and a tough defense to maintain his status in the class. And Bobby, you brought it up on Coffee and Football this morning. If Quinn Ewers were to come back, that kind of timeline, chronological order of what quarterback secession was thought to be, is now looking a little bit different if Ewers does return for 2024. So that is going to be something that, you know, will certainly play in and be a big factor in the recruitment of K.J. Lacey moving forward. Uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's one of those double-edged swords. Do you want Quinn Ewers to die in the class or an extra year for, for Quinn Ewers in, uh, in a Longhorn uniform? Obviously. You know, that is – never pass up a third-year starter coming back entering the SEC. Never want to pass that up. But it does start to complicate things as we move forward into the 2025 class. I would add this. This is more reason why it's really good that Texas signed Trey Owens uh, yes. in this past class to the quarterback out of Cy Fair High School that won the Greater Houston Touchdown Club Award. All right, CJ, if K.J. Lacey were to go somewhere else and something were to happen there, Texas isn't going to take two quarterbacks in a class. So I, this is all on the hypothetical uh, end of the scale, right? Who are some of the guys in the state of Texas that Texas might look at? I know all of them, just about all of them, have already committed elsewhere in the state, right? Yeah, no, it's kind of a, a fast-moving class for the quarterback position in the 2025 class in the state of Texas. Like you said, there's not a whole lot of you know, top uncommitted kids. I don't think it's necessarily a strong class in the state of Texas this year. They're lacking that you know kind of five-star bell cow that we've seen in previous classes. Uh, inside the state, but Adam Schobel, you know, he's kind of that top in-state kid right now for the 2025 class, currently committed to Baylor. Like you said, not a whole lot of top uncommitted quarterback prospects in the state. I look at Ty Hawkins again out of San Antonio. He actually visited Texas in the summer prior to his commitment to TCU. And then Lloyd Jones, another one that's committed to Texas Tech. These are kind of the three right now. I know a lot of fans, and uh, I've kind of been watching the Duncanville run and Keelan Russell who is committed to, to SMU as well as a, kind of a guy that could be a late riser in the class. But right now, I mean, you're looking at a lot of guys in this class that are committed elsewhere and also 
you know, it, it, it talent wise, there's, I, I think there's a lot of talent outside the state in this, this, uh, this cycle specifically. Yeah, I do too. I mean, you look at some national guys because Sark's not, a, not opposed to going national uh, guys like Bryce Underwood has not made a decision yet. George McIntyre, a uh, thought to be leaning to Alabama, uh, but we will see what exactly happens and transpires uh, as we look at the, uh, at the, the uh, whole situation with KJ Lacey in general. All right. Uh, everybody each and every week, the recruiting breakdown is brought to you by our friend, Mark Saunders. The Texas all state agent is the only insurance agent you need to help keep tags tabs on protection for all your stuff. Everything from your home car and boat to your motorcycle, RV and ATV call Texas all state agent, Mark Saunders office today. 512-218-8571. Are you in good hands? With more than 35 years of experience, you will be with Texas alum, Mark Saunders. Give him a call. 512-218-8571. Prices vary based on how you buy, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates. We appreciate you, Mark. Um, going on to running back. It's been two guys that we think are at the top of the list for a long while now, CJ. Um, and I say that, granted, that it's already in looking at the class of 2025. Harlem Berry, a young man out of the New Orleans area, is expected to announce his decision uh, at the Under Armour game on January 2nd. And then also Jordan Davidson, uh, the uh, running back out of Santa Ana Mater Day in California. Two, uh, two more out-of-state guys that the Longhorns – uh, seem to have targeted to some degree. Yeah, I, I, like you said, being able to go out and get national prospects. Look at the Ch Shard Choice and the work that he's been able to do since he's arrived on a Longhorn, uh, you know, kind of polo and coaching and tee. So it, it's it's fun because sort of a hand pick. Let me go get the best prospect available that I think fits my scheme and obviously enjoys being a Texas Longhorn. And that's exactly what the Shard Choice has done. Uh, uh, and this is no different. The the kind of hurdle that I'm you know, kind of mod monitoring now, Texas just went out and grabbed two very talented 2024 backs. And I think that's going to be, you know, uh, uh, one of the few narratives pushed against Texas, uh, you know, targets on the running back trail for the 2025 classes. Christian Clark is talented. Jarrett Gibson's talented. There's obviously a couple backs already on campus as well that will be demanding targets. If Texas wants to go back into the state of Texas, the running back that I'm probably the biggest fan of in the 2025 class for the state of Texas is Tiger Ryden out of DeSoto. And I know that he's kind of been a guy that's flirted around with Texas in the past, uh, obviously has big interest in Oklahoma and a number of other out-of-state programs as well. But having watched him a few times uh, personally this, this, this season, talented running back, and I'll be eager to see just where – you know, he kind of falls in the picking order of, uh, you know, the, the 2025 running back class. Very, very, very rugged runner. Uh, you know, DeSoto now two-time uh, state champs in a row, and he's been a focal point of each offense uh, each year, both as a sophomore and a junior. Uh, not the only talented player on that roster for sure, but certainly one of the more talented ones at the very least. All right, wide receiver just looks like it's crazy loaded in the state of Texas in 2025. Um I'll let you start, but DeCorian Moore out of Duncanville, uh, Kelshawn Lockett out of uh, Hitchcock, Andrew Marsh uh, down in the, the Katy area, uh, Marcus Harris out West Coast in Santa Ana Modern Day. Uh, give, give folks a sense of what Texas is really looking at for the wide receiver position in 2025. No, you mentioned it. This wide receiver, and I, I'll even add offensive line to that as well. It, it's a very good year in the state of Texas for both positions. Wide receiver more so than any other, uh, because when you start looking at the list of top prospects in the state, it's littered with, you know, talented wide receivers that can make big plays. A couple of my favorites, Ja'Cory Watson down out of Shadow Creek, down in Houston, speedster, big time playmaking ability after the catch, big fan of his, and Andrew Marsh, I've watched him on the seven on seven circuit, you know, basically ever since he was in high school, he's a big play waiting to happen. He's not afraid to jump over somebody to go get the ball. And his hands are tremendous. Big fan of what he brings to the table. I know Marsh was very high on Texas uh, dating back even prior to the, the, the addition of Chris Jackson to the coaching room. So that'll be something to watch. And obviously Decorian Moore, 
the prize of the Texas 2025 class, regardless of position, in my opinion, uh, in the argument for best all-around playmaker in the entire country for the next cycle. Currently committed to LSU. There's no secret Texas wants them and has been in hot pursuit of, you know, potentially flipping that, that commitment as well. But, Bobby, you mentioned a name, Marcus Harris, out of Matter Day. What does he bring to the table? Because I know that this in-state crop is it's pretty interesting, and Texas is not afraid to go to Modern Day specifically. Is he another guy that you know that pipeline could continue with in your eyes? I, I think he is a little bit, CJ. Look, um, I feel like it's going to be interesting to see exactly what Texas tries to do um, at wide receiver. Granted, they just took four high school guys, right? And you know they're going to take at least one more in the portal. Uh, but I, I think that there'll be some attrition, uh, further attrition right. somewhere down the line. I don't know who and I don't know what uh, exactly, but you got to think Texas is going to try to take at least two to three uh, to keep those elite guys coming in. Uh, to your point, I see somebody like the young man down at uh, uh, Kelshawn Johnson down at uh, Hitchcock as a real possibility. Mm-hmm. He's just a touchdown maker. And again, we know how Sark prioritizes that. Marcus Harris may not be as fast as some of those guys, but he's he's got tremendous hands uh, and – you know, whether or not they go out the modern day or go. I mean, there's guys in Alabama and Florida they like, too, by the way. We're just talking about uh, some guys that we already know. I think that we need to mention that this time a year ago, we weren't talking about Freddie DeBose necessarily being part of this Texas class. We weren't talking about uh, uh, Butler being a part of the Texas recruiting class. Some of those guys come in later. Right. And they're going to go do their evaluations uh, in time. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go to tight end. Uh, Amari Weston's already committed. He's a young man out of Calhoun, Georgia, uh, one of the top 150 so players in the country. Uh, they are still looking for another one. One of them's up out of South Lake that you know pretty well. Uh, tell folks about him. No, do you, I mean prototypical tight end. You know, great height, great physicality, and can stretch the field vertically. Uh, obviously, with Winston, you know, strength of his, of his game is being able to create big plays in the passing game. That's going to be his strength. He's going to be that, you know, kind of in-line passing threat at the wide or at the tight end position, which is great. But with that, that tight end spot, and especially in the Sarkeesian offense, which is so, you know, uh, so willing to go into a 12 personnel at any given point on the field, you need that in-line blocker, a guy like Gunnar Helm, who we've seen develop into kind of that, that brunt force kind of guy, uh, you know, at the tight end spot. And that's uh, Jack Van Dorsalier. So big fan of his. Uh, with that said, what kind of approach does Texas take to a two tight end class? I think that will be, uh, you know, kind of telling. And we'll certainly see how that develops as the 2025 class, you know, kind of progresses. It's, it's you know, one of those spots that's a numbers cruncher uh, given each cycle at the tight end spot. So I, I do like Jack Van Dorsalier out of South Lake Carroll. Obviously, Bear Tenney out of Lovejoy, someone who uh, has – kind of piqued my interest watching film this year and seeing him in person a few times. Uh, not a polished blocker in any sense, but is a guy that can stretch the field. Coyote Armstrong's another one. Uh, Keandre uh, Johnson as well out of Terrell. Uh, both guys, very talented, you know, in the, the tight end sense. It's a good year for tight ends, Bobby. Good year for yeah. tight ends in the state of Texas. Well, you mentioned Armstrong. He's out of Jasper, uh, where Texas just took Ty Anthony Smith and Tenney's out of uh, Love Joy, where te- Texas just took Parker Livingstone. So they're, they're, they've got some ties to some of these guys. And obviously, Riley Dodge, uh, the former Texas as- uh, assistant, uh, is the head coach at, at South Lake Carroll as well. So there's some ties that bind there. Um, all right, offensive line. This is going to be interesting because, uh, look, Michael Fasusi is the number one ranked offensive lineman in the state of Texas. Uh, Texas and Oklahoma have been recruiting him like, wildfire for at least two years now he's out of lewisville uh other than him who else is texas really in on and who has texas decided to really go on at this point in offensive line man i mean it's like i said it's a great class in the state of texas for offensive linemen you know you have a specific set of tackles and you've got your interior guys both you know it's not just one or the other both are pretty stacked up uh on the interior you know guys like tyler thomas i think are very intriguing to me uh, right out of Dickinson, someone that, you know, you know right away with the arm length, uh, I think stretches over 83 and a half inches, uh, really impressive in, in terms of his physicality and getting to the second level. 
uh, projects to the interior in my eyes. Obviously, you know, that could change as bodies develop and progress. Uh, but back out to tackle, I look at Lamont Rogers, Michael Fasusi, Ty Haywood is another one out of Denton Ryan. And that's been, you know, someone that Texas has been kind of toying around with. I know that they've been intrigued with him. He hasn't gotten down for a visit, at least not of, of late. Oklahoma's in, in the mix, and he mentioned Alabama to me as a team was his dream school growing up. So uh, really good tackle prospect out here. Jackson Christian's another one that's kind of been tossed around where, you know, his, his versatility and obviously what he just did over at PNG leading them to an, a state championship is something to watch. And obviously – Oh, go ahead. Real quick, Byron Washington, the, the, the kid that just went viral for his mammoth size. Texas has been – you know, in communication with him, they've been, you know, Kyle Flood's probably been that number one guy for Byron Washington. I'm not sure right now if he's at the developmental stage where he is ready to be, uh, you know, kind of taken into that class right away. You know, I think if he's another year away from really seeing, you know, just what his ceiling will be at that tackle position. Because obviously at 6'8", 380, you see it and you think, okay, you know, what kind of prospect can he be? But it's still a work in progress with him. Yep. I look at that. Uh, the one guy that I, I – two guys, Jonte Newman out of Bridgeland. I want to bring him up because I've heard that there's some interest from Texas there. And then John Mills, uh, uh, big offensive tackle, 6'6", 300-plus pounds out of San Francisco. Uh, Kyle okay. Flood has shown some real interest there. I actually went out and saw him um, in the December time period. He's actually going to be at the Texas-New Orleans uh, – Texas-Washington Sugar Bowl. Uh, because he's got some relatives in New Orleans. So John Mills, a big 6'6", 300-pound uh, tackle out of San Francisco. Keep that m a name in mind as well. All right, uh, before we go further, I want to say thanks again to our sponsor. That's Mark Saunders. Uh, Mark is the only insurance agent you need to help keep tabs on protection for all of your stuff, everything from your home, car, and boat, to your motorcycle, RV, and ATV. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today at 512 218-8571. Are you in good hands? With more than 35 years of experience, you will be with Texas alum Mark Saunders. Give him a call, 512-218-8571. Hook him, Mark. We appreciate you, bud. All right. Uh, I want to ask you this, you know, kind of combining this all together, CJ. Uh, I'm looking at it. You're the, the next big thing that happens in Texas recruiting is a January 20th junior day. We've heard some names trickle in. But you're actually on the road this week. You're headed to the Under Armour game uh, on, was it tomorrow or, or Thursday? Which day are you headed out that way? Thursday, heading out the 28th. Okay, so heading out that way. You're going to that. Then you're going to the Sugar Bowl. You're going to meet me there. We're going to do some live streams from there. And then you're immediately going to San Antonio uh, for that game. Who are some of the guys you're looking forward to see in person over the next week or so uh, as, as Longhorn Commitments? I, I really want to see Ryan Wingo. I want to see the hype. I want to see the, you know, really what kind of creates that buzz around the five star uh, out there in, in the Under Armour game. Because, I mean, like we said all along, there's going to be a lot of void, a lot of uh, target share that needs to be filled. Can he be a guy to step in right away? And to see him kind of compete and go against all these, you know, kind of four or five star defensive backs in a one on one situation is exciting. So that's certainly number one. And then I want to see Zeno Umiozulu again in, in action. I want to see what kind of strides he has taken uh, since the beginning of the year. Obviously, the, the prototypical size and, and, and length off the edge is very uh, in, in encouraging to me. But will he be able to stand in and really compete right away? I want to see it in, in action. And then obviously headed down to San Antonio, Trey, uh, Trey Owens. I mean, this will be fun getting to see him throw to uh, a bevy of, of Division I wide receivers. I, I mean, Sarkeesian's kind of one of those quarterback whisperers that you talk about in the college football ranks. So what he can do with Trey Owens, get, kind of mold him into the quarterback that he wants, this will be exciting to see uh, just what kind of prospect he has turned into after a, a tremendous year at Cy Fair this year. All right. Uh, that'll do it uh, for this week's recruiting breakdown. Uh, a lot of focus this week, and deservedly so, on Washington. But you're already going to be out there looking at 2025 and more uh, at Under Armour, et cetera. Uh, all right. For uh, C.J. Vogel, I'm Bobby Burton. That's been this episode of On Texas Football Recruiting Breakdown. Thanks.